impoverished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's grip. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises, and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zan is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been a Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Every one loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, 
and the maker of it as a spark. Right. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. I'm not sure if you can understand everything that was read to you, but it's like as though God has been watching. He's been watching everything and he is not pleased. He's watching the sins that his children have been committing. The rebellion in their hearts, minds. Mm -hmm. The willingness to walk away from God. That back at this time they they had um animals that they sacrificed and it just seemed like they didn't care about how they even brought that to God. It's like God, I'm, I'm God is like saying, I'm tired of all the sacrifices. God wants, God wants us. You know, He's tired of us hurting one another. You know, committing sins. He wants the only way we can truly be clean is to repent, turn around. The heart, the mind. God loves when our heart turns around, our mind turns around. Our thought pattern is not the same. As a sinner, you really feel like where you live at is total reality. You deal with whatever you have to deal with day to day. You go about your life. Every day seems completely mm -hmm. the same. But when you come to Jesus Christ and you ask him to save you, um, redeem you, uh, turn you around, the restoration. That's when these notes come into play. It says here that restoration in our notes in the Bible, restoration is, all, is always in abundance. When something is restored, it is always better than it was to begin with. God's promise to us is better is a better way, excuse me, a better life, a better future for ourselves and our loved ones. I, I, be, I really have found as we begin to study through various parts of the Old Testament that those that were standing with God after a while decided to trickle over from God into sin, which is not of God. But praise God for the book of Daniel which talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel himself that shows us how we should walk in fellowship with God. If we have inconsistencies in our lives that we know that we used to have uh, years ago, it said WWJD, what would Jesus do? If Jesus wasn't doing it, why should I do it? Show me how to stop doing things that are not like you, curse, cussing, cursing, profanity, listening to the popular flesh music of this world. Show me how I should live. And praise God for the part of the Bible in the this Old Testament we have here. It talks about the remnant, the people that are going to, and I pray to God to be part of, the people that are going to be, going to do what God told them to do. From the Old Testament, which is the law, into the New Testament, which is grace. We we have grace, but we want to follow Jesus who came and walked the earth uh -huh. exactly as the word of God is written. In order to do this, we must be restored. We must be um we must have restoration and we must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Even if we have backslidden, we must decide that I will follow Christ. I, will. I can't just do it with my flesh. I can't do it with my feelings. It's the, the, no. <laughs> we need the Holy One inside us to convict and navigate. We need the Holy Ghost inside us. So when we go through these tough times, if we have to go through surgeries or whatever it is, it's the Holy One inside us that will tell you it's going to be all right. Or you, instead of doing this surgery, do that surgery. It's going to tell you that, yes, you should do physical t therapy or how many days to do it. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to navigate you through this life, not yourself. Because yourself, God forbid, 
Don't let it happen, God. Yourself will say, just jump off a bridge. What you going to do with that? You're going to be, you're not going to live out what God told you to do. A number one. And that jumping off will send you straight to hell. And so many people in these ears that God has blessed us to have, thank God for hearing at times, would say, I will take my chances in hell. And hey, you never been there first and foremost. <laughs> number two, you shouldn't even want to go. And number three, once you get there, you can't come out. So think carefully. Think wisely. Think, think. Because God didn't just make this world so he can just torture us. He didn't give us uh, Jesus the, uh, the example to make it seem like it can't be done. Because Jesus walked the earth. He walked with the, he had his disciples. Crazy Tyler Perry and my Medea say disciplines. No, they're disciples. And he, 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 taught them, he taught them step by step. And how the Father, how God, Father God, how he works. And how he leads. And what he does and what he does not do. And what he does do is completely continue to give us the word of God. And show us the direction to go in. See, you can't lean on Sister Duke, Holy Ghost. That's the gift God gave me. You need your own <laughs> specific the spirit of God that God has designed for your life. You know, so when you see those born again Christians and you say, How in the world are they getting through? Why in the world are you so happy? You you see all this all around us? Yeah. I'm blessed because I've had people in my life that said things like when you see the abomination and the desolation stand in a holy place. I'm blessed because of the word of God as a young girl that I had someone in my life that taught us Bible scriptures. I'm blessed because after after everything, after this life shall pass, only what you do for Christ will last. I'm blessed because I had those people, I had a lot of people talking to me. So when I got up against the wall and I got tired of being a sinner, I got tired of being tired. I, I thank God for deciding to tire for the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Thank God. Halfway, I remember talking to a friend of mine that night and I was making my mom and I go home after, I mean, I got tired of hearing that I didn't trust God. When I knew in my heart, I trust God. God's going to do so many things, but ultimately I need to prove it. And that is to tarry for the Holy Ghost, give myself over to the Lord and thank God for that. Thank God for that made up mind. Thank God for him accepting me into his family. Thank God. They get they, the Bible tells why I call him Abba Father. Thank God. So once once I got the, the Holy Ghost, praise God. Filled the Holy Ghost. I had different people in my life again looking and listening and telling me what to do. Because as a young, being born again, freshly born again Christian, you need that. You you're you're basically like a babe. Not the wham wham part, but you're a babe. And you need to continue to read the word of God and pray. And I would read and pray and ask God to do different things and pray for stuff. And, and things just come so quick. And it's like, ooh, ooh, you know. Then after a while, God, God will just lead me and guide me. Maybe he would not answer that prayer so quickly. But do I hold on? Do I give up? Do I jump back in the world? You have to make up your mind. You know? You're going to make up. You're going to make um, you're going to have problems. You're going to make mistakes. That's the word we needed. But where is your heart? You know, you're going to make mistakes. But where is your heart? What is your heart saying to God? There's what your tongue is saying. <laughs> your lips are saying. Your head is saying. But the Bible said, man looks on the outward appearance. What you look like. Oh, this person, she ain't nothing to it. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he, he, he's a good person. That's how, that, that person ain't nobody. But the Bible says, but man look on the outward appearance. But the word of God said, but God looks at the heart. It's at the heart that flows the issues of life. Will that heart follow me? Or will that heart be a wishy-washy, she up and down? She with me today. She going tomorrow. She love me. But my goodness, she sure love the world. She just give it all her time and drink wine. And she love the world. And this is where she at. You know, God wants, he just don't want us to, the Bible talks about lip service. Lord, I love you. 
But hold on, God. Let me go cuss this child out. No, no. Did Jesus cuss out anybody in the Bible? Now, there is the money changes. He had to go through there. With the, they were summoning doves at the house of God instead of treating they, they just treated the house of God like it was a place of the little flea market instead of paraphrasing it. Instead of the house of God, and he had to get his get like a, some type of rope of, and, and whip them out of there. He said, "This my house should be called the house of God, but you made make it into a den of thieves. This is my house. You don't just use my house for whatever you want. This is a sacred place, and that's what this world is screaming out for. We we, we want to have someone to follow. We want to have somebody to lean on. I'm, I almost want to sing the cheers." theme song, but I ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. But we need the gospel version of that version. You know, you want to be one where I can, be, where I, I can belong. It's in God. And sometimes, God forbid, but apparently the Lord wants, it must be said, sometimes you are in the church and you may see things that may, and my mother, my late grandmother would say, would cut your spirit, or cross your spirit, excuse me, grandma, cross your spirit, get you upset, you don't understand. And then you feel like, why am I following God? God didn't hurt those. God didn't hurt you. It was that person that said something, or led you the wrong way, or just had a bad experience. But you don't leave the Lord when those things happen. You stick with God, blessed to be saved and Holy Ghost filled, a beautiful gift. When when I get in those tight places, tight places in life, when I want to back up. Just I don't I don't even want Lord I don't I don't even want to go for this operation. I was literally on my way on on the operating table, and I was like, you know what? I don't even want to do this. Years ago, 2010, I said I don't want to do this. But the Spirit of God knew, even though my mouth was talking, it knew what the heart was saying, and He was with me. I could see Him walking with me, talking to me. As I begin to go, they were wheeling me into the room and let me know how things would go. And we pray that you know God in the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection. Know him that way. That that to the point that you're born again, you're saved, you're speaking in tongues, you know for surety, and you're directed by him. You can hear him. And what I like about being born again is and saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, how if we all have the same spirit of God, but it's just the testimonies of how he deals with us is so differently. He may want to wake you up in the middle of the night. You want him up at 3 in the morning. I feel like I want ice cream. No, no, no. You're supposed to be, I need you to come and pray and talk to me. Let me talk to you for a few minutes. 3 in the morning, Lord? You know I got to go to work. Huh? Give me a few minutes. I, you know, got to make it worth your time, you know? It just was all differently. You could be having a rough day at work, been there, and just go in the, go in the bathroom for a minute, and I got a few minutes so I can talk to God, speak in tongues, and just, you know, talk for a minute, and he, God will just give you a reassurance. That's why it's so important to be saved. When you can't call on nobody, and you know, I want to say, you don't feel, you feel like no one understands. You know nobody understands it at all. But Jesus does. He knows if you you really gotta he you know if your argument is worth the worth the time, or he needs to tell you to shut up. <laughs> I was just thinking like so many times Lord, I'm going through a situation right now, and like so many times, the flesh of mine needs to be reassured. That's a lot. Of, be a lot of reassurance <laughs> on this one, and he reassured me again. And I thank God. And then you get to the point that you can't you in the natural you can't see it, but in the spiritual you you see yourself holding on to the word of God. So, uh -uh. God said dot 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 in this word. God said, let me give you dot dot dot. God said in the word of God that nay and all these things are more than a conqueror. So I know the adversary may be against me. And, and when it talks about David and Goliath, but as David, as David triumphed over Goliath, so will I be triumphant over what's against me in Jesus' name. Let Lord God help us to crack the code in our lives, whether it's a relationship or whatever it is. Help us be willing. You know, your Bible said, be willing and obedient. We will eat the good of the land. 
in the middle of a pandemic, showing you what to eat, showing you where to go. I wanted, I know I've testified about this, but we're going to testify one more time. <laughs> wanted a specific meat. And the Lord said, go to such and such store. Mm -hmm. I was in my little feelings that day, and I was like, Lord, you were serious to go to such and such store? I hope when they get there, be there. What's wrong with me? Get to the store. There it is. Pick, choose how many you want in the middle of a pandemic. We need God. One another is cool. We can we can we can talk about various things. It's it's nothing wrong with us having, you know, friends and all these things. But in the middle, even in that, the long time with God. Even when your friends are going through, your friends don't know. So, my friend, let me really put you on to something highly important. Being born again and saved. Through the Holy Ghost. It's not in the sin stuff. We run around here and paying homage to this person in sin and that person in sin. Ain't got the Holy Ghost or nothing. These people are going to stand before the Lord. We just celebrated. Well, technically, we're going to celebrate tomorrow. Martin Luther King Jr. His birthday was actually... Saturday, Saturday was the, real <laughs> the 15th. Real yeah. And do you know Martin Luther King and Frederick Douglass and I'm going to call that woman's name, Harriet Tubman Rich. and uh, well, let's call some other people. Let's see. Rosa Parks. Let's call some other people. We need uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington and oh, 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 not 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 yet. We need the ones that died that are not alive. You know the what's that child on the nickel? The uh, Jefferson Thomas Jefferson. All these people in the civil rights movement, any movement, are going to stand before God Himself. The late Prince is going to stand before Jehovah God Himself. And the books is going to be more fantastic than this. It's going to be open. What are you, what are you in the book looking for us to do? I tell you. In the book of Revelation, Take Your Time is one of my favorites. I gravitated to that book between that one and Habakkuk. And the books are going to be open, and they're going to be looking for your name. I'm looking to see, are you in the book of life? And those that are not found in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. So why were they cast into the lake of fire? Because these are, what I thank God for my husband, I always mm -hmm. say it, I get to use the word. Mm -hmm. These are those, mm -hmm. these are the ones that are not in the book. They're the God rejectors. They're the ones that decided, you know what? Either I'm going to take my chances or I'm going to get sick. I told the Lord one year, young teenage, thank you Lord for the, the, the peace that passed the understanding. He said, keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. For the chances, I said, Lord, I'm going to give my life to you at such and such age. But first, let me go out here and learn, what, you know, go out here and see the world. And I'm a teenager, I ain't know nothing. And boy, out in this world, and the world's so wicked. <laughs> Try to hurt a sister, you know? Try to snatch a little pocketbook. Yeah, and out here to, to see what? What is you What is you really missing out on? You think you're missing out on? But once you go to God and see what he has for you and give your life totally over to him, now you're connected to something and someone more powerful than you and I. All this green screen and just if a man could fly, all that, I, we get it. We got we got planes, trains, automobiles, but we're talking about the covenant keeper. We're talking about the one that's going to keep you. You know, the one you want to tell everybody about. You know, share it. Tell somebody Jesus lives. He ain't dead. Because so, so many things are happening. And, and then the Bible talks about one day is as a thousand years. One day is as a thousand years to our Lord. And you know what else I'm fascinated about? All our little, all the little things we did, things that mean something to you. When Jesus come back, ain't none of that. It's going to be dust. You won't have to worry about the, uh, what is that? They have the garbage problems and the, the hills of all the all the recyclable. And all. It's like God can just make it all go to dust like it never was. He's powerful. He's, he's omniscient. 
So we pray that you give your life totally over to him, whether people are hearing this message or not. Help them to focus because the Lord is coming back. You don't know how long you're going to be here. Case in point, thank God for Facebook and not so much thank God for Facebook. Read about someone that I definitely um, knew. Sweet, seemed like a sweet individual, but mainly he was sinning. And hopefully before he left this world, he gave his life over to God. When I saw him, he was in sin mode. But hopefully before, after, after I seen him, he gave his life over. Prayerfully, he gave his life over to God because he's going to wake up and he's going to see the Lord too. We all going to stand before him. You know, we need, we need to remember this and know this because we need to fear him. The, the Bible says it is, it is, it is, it is a, it's a great thing to fear the Lord. The fear, thank you, Lord. The fear, that's the spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit, uh, 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 this is the word right here. It says the, the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's the Holy Ghost. It's the beginning of wisdom. Thank you, God, because that's way better than what I was just saying. <laughs> so we thank and praise God for restoration. Making us better than we were. Being saved. Just kind of like, this is an example. Kind of like when, the, hopefully it all still worked this way. But whenever, God forbid, my brothers got angry with me and they decided to take my little doll head. That is so, they're so, my brothers only have three. But they're so funny. They, they got to be home. But well, you did such and such to us. And we took your doll head hostage. They go in the room and the doll ain't got no head. Like, what in the world? Boys are so funny. And so, you know, so when they finally decided, or, or maybe one of my younger brothers would tell me where my oldest and my middle brother, because it's, there's me, and then there's, no, no, there's my oldest brother, then there's me, and then there's my brother after him, then there's my other brother. I'm sorry, my sister's going to shoot me. Then I have another sister, then I have another sister. So... Um, my youngest, sometimes they, the number, 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 I'm number two. So the number, the number four baby, the brother would tell me where they, where my doll heads were. Anywho, it's about how once you get the doll head, you, you kind of squeeze the head and kind of maneuver it onto the body. Hopefully Barbie still work like that. Cause that would be bad if it would never go back on. Sometimes it would, it would be, you, you could push it all the way down and the head would be all like this on the body. But God is going, I pray God does that for us. We have a pen here. The hot, we're, we're discombobulated. We walk around here and we're supposed to have a top. And we're around here with other tops on us and they don't go together. But once God restores, he puts us where, right where we belong. And I thank God for that. I thank God for being right where I belong. I don't have to wonder where I belong. Because I belong to him. I'm right where I need to be. You know, when things begin to happen, I'm, I'm right where I need to be. All right. I pray that I'm up here as long as God sees fit, but we pray that God restores his children. We pray that in so many words, you felt as though the Lord stooped down. He kind of got to your level. Looking you straight dead in your face. And hear him saying, come unto me, all the that are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take, his, take him at his word and let him, and let him and come into restoration in Jesus' name. You don't have to live like a sinner no longer. Live for God so you, so you, so you know you, where you belong. You have a place you belong. And when things get hot, honey, you got that. You got your Bible with you. Read all you want in the Bible. So much the Bible has to say. So many parts in the the new, the Old Testament that makes so much sense. What was what was in the ears? Let's see. Today's Sunday, so it was Saturday night. And I heard the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, more than one time in my life. I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. But it's, as the young people say, it hit. It hit different. 
Saturday night. <laughs> it truly did. It was the sixth chapter. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, the six, six and ten. It says Ephesians six and ten. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Kind of remind me of um, what's that Iron Man? When he would power up the suit, however he did it. I have to go back and watch the movie. I've seen parts of it. My husband and son have seen all of it, but I have to go back and watch it after bringing this up to y'all. So it's just something about it. And then verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He means like you get to put on your regular clothes, you know, give me if it's a little TMI. Just like women have to put on a bra or men put on their undershirt and their underwears. He's saying, don't get yourself discombobulated with this world. No, 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 no. Let's get dressed. And when I say get dressed, I mean get dressed in the Holy Ghost. He says, now, put on, is it put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And things are coming at you. And it says here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You think we wrestle? Why is that person, why is that crime committed over and over and over and over and over? And over the, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not, what is that show popping up, Jesus? This is not, um... <laughs> this is not the Power Rangers, but we need to be the God Rangers in Jesus' name. I said, the spiritual weakness in high places, we're fun to you. Take on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the race, breastplate of righteousness, and your feet, your feet, excuse me, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then it goes into one I, the one I like, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching unto uh, with perseverance and supplication for all saints. And as for me, that I may uh, be given uh, unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery <clears throat> of the gospel. Okay. So in essence, get dressed. The only way to get dressed, you got to be you got to be born again. Except the man be born of water. And of, thank you, Bishop, for Bishop Hezekiah Walker. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I, I seriously do not care.